These dusty tunnels in Afghanistan hide precious jewels worth millions. Miners carved these caves with dynamite left behind by decades of war. Habibullah is hunting for a green stone called berush or tourmaline. About three trillion dollars worth of precious minerals are buried inside mountains across Afghanistan. Habib says the mines are not owned or regulated by anyone. For decades, insurgent groups and the Taliban mined and smuggled the jewels out of the country and used the profits to buy weapons. Even today, 95% of gems leave the country illegally. So how did rocks become more precious than human life here? And why are people in one of the most resource-rich countries in the world still struggling with poverty? The province of Kanar was one of the deadliest places in Afghanistan. Decades of fighting forced thousands of families to flee their homes. But Habib and his nine cousins grew up around here and know every inch of these mountains. Habib hikes for 10 hours to reach a campsite nearly 10,000 feet above sea level. They'll live here mining for the next month. Habib first spotted tourmaline in these mountains 25 years ago. Now, with decades of experience, the 55-year-old is the leader of his group. And with that short prayer, the men are ready to crawl down 300 feet. The veins are actually magma that cooled under high pressure, creating emerald and tourmaline. They're already 300 feet deep, and they can't go any farther without air. This narrow tube pumps their oxygen from a ventilator above ground. <coughs> Inhaling all this dust can scar workers' lungs for life. But nothing stops these men. Today, they're going even deeper into the mine because they've gotten everything they can from these walls. <laughs> to get farther into the bedrock, they drill holes and fill them with dynamite.
هم چې دا خطری ده دا پر مخ ده دا خطری ده چې جیب چې کنه ودې دلته چې ولاړ دای مخ ته دمنه وان را خلاص شه دا به چت سره نیسی خو مرګل ته سره نه وژنې دي خو بس په بله غریبي سره نه شته دغه کار دي کله ګي The bedrock that contains the gems is often brittle and could easily collapse with heavy drilling. In 2019, 30 miners were buried alive at a gold mine in another province. The Marsaralu bi dikana. Marsaralu bi dikana da bamuna di da da gadi manga dasi baja haza jamana laru. Der 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 marshus. The dynamite is all set. Now they have less than a minute to get out of this tunnel. They usually go back in to retrieve the gems. But today they left early because they heard the Taliban was on its way. During the 20-year war, the Taliban and other insurgent groups operated most of these mines. Reports suggest they were earning up to 20 million dollars a year smuggling jewels out of the country. And the gems continue to fund the Taliban today, after the group regained control of Afghanistan. Meanwhile, people like Habib struggle to find buyers, since most countries don't openly trade with Afghanistan. منګ د ماخام ډوډی چې وخرو د سارت زمنګ ای څم نه ان دومره پشار او د غزم په خپل په دې ځي خون پراتای چې یا الله اوس چې او کوبل د کمادن نه لا ساخلو his only option is selling to local jewelers he divides the money among his workers habib makes about 140 dollars a month nearly double the average salary in this country but he has to feed his wife and 12 children and it's hard to sell his gems for more agui masla kishwaray de gawre durust istikhraj chawa ke darz na dashta basha un ma khada qimatish balas Noura Ahmad Shirzad has been polishing gems for more than 30 years. He learned the craft from his cousin in Pakistan when his family lived there as refugees during the Afghan Civil War. But he returned in the early 2000s and set up a workshop with his brothers here in Kabul. He works mostly with blue lapis lazuli. Noor's younger brother, Amir Ahmad Shirzad, runs the store upstairs. His son helps out before school. 
They sell everything from dishes to jewelry and sculptures. Amir says he prices items based on the weight of the stones and how long each piece took to make. He even sells the type of stone Habib mines. And he makes these prayer bead necklaces himself. He says business has been tough lately. Back in Kanar, when Habib isn't busy mining, he's working on his new home just minutes away from the mines. He will no longer have to walk 10 hours to get to work. While he risks his life hunting for gems, it has helped him pay for this new home. And Habib is thankful for that. Inshallah, Zalla, to midlarama che mal no magi puri khpala khizmat aimandari kuma.